guys? It's Rich Super Bash. Um, we're having a big rainstorm right now, and so I thought I'd just do a quick bench video. Um, with the bad weather, I recently got rid of my tiny little table in the garage and pulled out this old table that had been sitting in the in the backyard under the back patio. Anyway, it's giving me a little bit more room to work with. Um, you can see the, the arrangement here. We got the the back slash and our the kids. Uh, pimped out ECX two-wheel drives down there. Uh, anyway, so basically, without babbling too much, I wanted to make a video about, um, really about gearing. Um, in particular, about broken gears. So, anyway, there's been, um, sooner or later, if you're running hard on 6S with the stock differentials, you're gonna have most likely some type of failure um, I'm not posting this to freak anybody out. It's just a simple fact. So anyway, um, so what I wanted to point out here was um, these guys here, the planetary gears, uh, there's two in each differential. Um, some of this stuff, guys, you probably already know, but I did want to throw out some part numbers that might be helpful for people. Um, all of these breakages have actually been in the Typhon. Um, we have two of them here. This is my son's that's got, it's the Trugified one that I've shot a couple videos on. Uh, just put some new wheels on it actually. Uh, these aren't even taped yet. I just kind of dry fitted them. Just got some 2.8s on there. But without getting too distracted, um, let me bring you over here to the ghost ship. So this is actually my Typhon, which is completely stripped. It's kind of ridiculous at this point. I'm definitely going to rebuild it. I have a whole got a whole thing of parts underneath it that I'm that are going back on but essentially with these with the breakages I've been borrowing from my Typhon for the other cars so um, in any case going back to the gearing um, both times I've had both both times I've had like kind of catastrophes with the gears um, they're probably driver error um, I'm thinking back. My son was driving one time, and actually he was on 4S. Uh, but I think what ended up happening is we finished his run, and we noticed he was in two-wheel drive. Well, that was a simple problem. Uh, basically, one of the one of the uh, the cups had come loose for the front drive shaft. Uh, we figured that out, fixed it, no problem. Um, the other breakages were essentially essentially dad's bad. Uh, the first one I had, I was drag racing my daughter Angie, and I ended up hitting her pretty hard from behind. Um, this was on my Typhon, probably going at least 55, 60 plus on the school blacktop. Anyway, I essentially diffed out where the car went airborne on full throttle and then the wheels quickly planted on the ground. Well, that broke both planetary gears and the center differential. Um, I don't remember all the other, I'm trying to think. Now, these guys here, I think I broke um, one front and one center, if I remember correctly. But again, it was another video that I posted, the first uh, Trugified Typhon video I posted where I sliced the side of the ramp. And essentially, I was on full throttle, or close to full throttle, and essentially left wheels planted on the ramp, right wheels missed the ramp and free spun, and right after that we had a clicking noise. So anyway, I just, uh, just to show you a picture here of these teeth, um, what I found was, this might be too much of a close up, so first I thought we just had a problem in the front. And it was actually this guy here. No, it was this guy. Anyway, so the main input gear that goes into the front diff was missing a tooth. So I fixed that, borrowed a, borrowed one from my, my local hobby shop, didn't have it. So I went ahead and just pulled it out of my Typhon. And I ended up realizing the rear had also lost two teeth in the same, pretty much in the same instance. Um, and if I recall correctly, I had also blown, I think it was both, I'm not sure, I think it might have been both center 
um, center planetary gears. So here's a picture of a good one. Um, you'll see basically all when these fail, they all fail pretty much in the same spot, right where the pin, right where the pin goes through the gear there. So anyway, uh, but one way one way to um, discourage your diff from imploding especially if you're going to run on 6S or you're going to gear your car up and just bash hard definitely um, get some extra shims in your diff okay um, so if you look at the schematic here this picture is pretty lousy I'm hoping it here let me bring this into the light a little bit better so if you look at the schematic basically these diffs are all the same I think I'm looking at an outcast manual um, but basically you have one shim, you have four shims total. One, two, three, and four. This is how they come stock. So if you put another shim, you actually buy a planetary shim and put it behind this gear, right? So it's going to basically, you're going to put your shaft, you're going to put your uh, input through, put the shim on, then put your pin on and then put the planetary gear back on with the shim behind it. The shim I'm referring to is this guy right here which unfortunately is on back order but it's a TD310475. I think they're like four or five bucks for a bag of ten. Those are the specs right there. It's actually it's a five by eighteen by point two and here is an alternative that somebody from the forum posted, so thank you very much. It's from a Mugen, or Mugen, uh, M-U-G-E-0206. Um, and I definitely, I want to interrupt this just to kind of give a um, shout out to Thomas P. Um, basically, if it weren't for him, I wouldn't have ever found out how to bulletproof these diffs. So that's his site right there. Um, definitely need to, Thomas P deserves a huge shout out. Um, TP Parts RC Extreme, he does unbelievable videos as well. Um, but I'm basically following his pathway and taking his expertise on this whole matter. Um, anyway, so back to, back to some part numbers. The, the, the other thing I wanted to bring up that I hadn't really seen anyone make a video of yet, per se, was that, so, <clears throat> I have not broken any gears on the Creighton and had not bro broken any gears on the Outcast. Oh, and by the way, so you're not thrown off, I just swapped my wing again. I um, took my wing mount off the Go ship, my Typhon, and just put it on here. I just busted it in my last video. I put my old Losi wing that was on the Outcast, decided to put that wing back on because it's got a little bit more flex. Um, and I'd rather the wing take the damage. It's only 10 bucks versus getting doing a whole new wing mount. When I was at the hobby store yesterday um, buying parts, I saw some wheelie bars. So I decided I'm just going to throw one on the Creighton. And actually, it fits a little better with this with this Losi. Um, so I took off my Proline Trifecta. Anyway, before I babble on too long, this is what I really wanted to talk about here. So if you look at I finally did break a gear on my on my outcast. Let me get my flashlight. This doesn't look good. Um, so if you look here, now we just talked about shimming internally. Um, to shim externally, this is kind of hokey, but basically, um, let me bring this in. What I'm talking about is when I bought my Creighton a few weeks back, I found a little tiny spacer right on the side of this bearing and I thought it was actually actually there in error or some kind of a flup and ended up posting a thread on the forum called the uh, Creighton Mystery Spacer. Well it's this guy right here. These little tiny spacers. This spacer actually sits, if I can slide her over, this is going to be a little bit here. Let me let me just pull the diff out. All right. So this little spacer sits right on here. Okay. It sits up on the bearing, and its job is to push this gear into that gear, your input gear. Okay. 
um, what I noticed, I was getting a clicking sound. I was trying to run my, I was trying to run the Outcast, and I ended up having to do my last video on the Creighton because this is really blurry, guys. Let me let me try and let me try and get a better shot on this. There is a tooth on here that is basically flattened. There it is. I think I just have to hold this further away. This looks like crap. So I don't know if you can see that. There's a tooth right there and the fleck of what's left of it just sitting in the gears. Now, when I look at this guy with the naked eye, being the cheap bastard I am, this gear actually looks like it's salvageable and maybe it is. But when I take a really close look at it, with my reading glasses, of course, it actually looks like the tip of the teeth took a little bit of damage. I guess what I'm getting at, these gears are like 12 bucks, these main input gears. This guy looks a little bit cleaner, honestly, so I'm going to do the right thing and go ahead and just put a new one in. Um, but anyway, uh, what else did I want to talk about here today? Um, so what I want to get at was when I was at the hobby store, I ended up I ended up finding these guys here, these Kyosho, uh, part number, it looks like 96772, and I had already bought these Technos, and TKR1222. So basically, this shim, it looks like it is just a hair smaller. They're both 13 by 16s. This is a 0.1 mm thickness. This one's a point. One five. I'm actually going to try slapping two of these on to basically take the slop out, the side to side slop. If you if you look at if you think about it, the the gear is so tiny for the amount of power it's it's being asked to uh, transfer to the rear and the front. But basically, if you grab these bearings and you and you slide that, you can move this back to back. You will feel play. It's very very small. But my plan is, is I'm going to stack these shims up as best I can, and hopefully that gear will not fail on me again. Um, ideally, if you ask me, if you're going to run hard, just shim all of your diffs, um, both internally and externally. Um, let me see if there's anything else I want to talk about. I think that's it. And on a more basic note, if you guys have a brand new Creighton or Outcast, um, make sure you heat up your screws. Any metal, metal to metal screws, um, regardless of what the what heat source you're using. Somebody on the forum recently recommended this guy here. It's a Weller. God, what is wrong with my camera? Anyway, it's a it's a I had never I had never purchased a trigger style before. This one is a 140 slash 100 watt iron, and this thing gets smoking, smoking hot right after you pull the trigger. But make sure you screw, you uh, really heat up your screw heads. Um, these guys right in here. Make sure you're heating up the metal to metal ones, not the not the metal to plastic. So I'm referring to this, this guy for some reason has always been the bugger um, when, these, when you first get these rigs. This one, that one, and that one are all metal. You're going to heat these up as, as best you can with an iron before you try and break that red locker. I'm not sure why they're using red locker, but it's just a complete pain in the ass. Um, and you'll end up stripping your screw even if you use high quality tools. Um, these two go into the plastic. The plastic portion of the um, the diff support. Do not heat those up. Uh, there's no thread locker. If anything, you'll just melt the plastic. Um, same thing with the cups. The cups are very difficult to break free the first time. Um, I'm going to take my whole motor mount out and my center diff. Lift this guy up to take that out. Um, both the grub screw and the shaft itself. I just kind of have to heat it up. But basically. If you don't heed the warning, you might end up with a $30 useless motor mount like this guy. I still have a little screw in there that I ultimately had to drill 
through the bottom of the chassis. I did not damage the chassis, but I was I basically had to break the screw and was unable to um, thus far I'm unable to get that little piece of screw that's left in there out of here. Um, other than that, I, could, I guess I could share some quick part numbers with you guys. Um, I don't have the part number for the extra little shims that you would need. Um, again, I don't know if I finished my thought process on that, but basically, um, so there's four shims. If you add at least one extra shim to, um, to, to each, not, not to each four, but add, essentially add a shim, say, behind here, and another one, say, behind here, or there, and there. Basically, six little shims, one planetary shim behind each planetary gear. Um, that will really tighten up your diff and decrease your chance for failure. Um, these guys, unfortunately, are on back order as well. If you do end up blowing out your gears, um, you can buy, this is the cheapest pack I've been able to find, AR310436. It's just a just straightforward diff gear set that'll work on any of the eight scales as far as I'm aware of. All right, guys, I'm gonna stop babbling. Uh, hope some of this was helpful. Uh, I don't want you to end up like that if you can avoid it. So peace out, and I hope you guys are all keeping warm and dry, and can't wait till stuff dries out and I can get these guys out again. Take care.